takeaways from that scrimmage you guys had? Kind of your first taste of real football over his fault. Uh, big takeaway from the scrimmage. Um, kind of a overall theme for the defense was when we had busts, a couple busts out there, assignment errors, communication errors, the offense was very productive. When we were all on the same page and everybody, all 11 guys playing one defense, we were, we were pretty salty. So I think communication and, and just the offense came out with a really good tempo, I thought, that day. And us being able to adjust to that tempo is going to be kind of the tale of the story here. Um, but I thought the first group tackled well. Uh, second and third groups got to get a little better. I thought we were physical when we needed to be. And we saw a lot of guys do a lot of good things. So uh, it was great for us. We were talking with Cam Taylor up here. Just how valuable is that? Where chess piece, you can kind of move all over the place. I mean, Cam's a really dynamic player. You know, he's he can take reps at corner. He can take reps at safety. He can replace JoJo at outside backer against 11 personnel teams when we need him to. So having a guy like him that knows the whole defense, every single position, and is physical enough to play down low and is good enough on the edge to play coverage, is, is pretty exceptional. What do you feel about your uh, your outside backers? I know there are some guys in and out. Where do you think you stand right now? Yeah, I feel pretty good. Um, I think that group's getting a lot better. I think uh, Alex Davis, Fur, you know, I know what JoJo is. Um, those guys are going to give us some good, some good reps. Um, Garrett Nelson's playing, playing really well for a true freshman. And Caleb Tanner's doing a lot of nice things, and he's going to help us. So I think we got four or five guys right now that I feel good about rolling out there. You're able to talk about Jakeem Green. Uh, this sure. What do you want to know? Just what, what he brings to the team. And I guess what his role potentially could be. Well, what he brings to the team is definitely D line depth, and I'm sure he'll challenge for a starting role. Um, just because he got here late doesn't mean he can't be in that thing. Um, he's got to earn it, just like everybody does, but definitely depth, definitely an inside guy that gives us some pass rush and some, some help against the run is, that, I think, where his value is at. From your perspective, was it someone you guys felt confident about throughout the process, or was that maybe a bit of a roller coaster element to him? I mean, I think anytime you're dealing with a guy that is going to finish school late and you can't lock him into a letter of intent, there's always a little bit of, like, there's no certainty. You know, if the next, if the next team comes along and wants to recruit him, they can recruit him. So that's always a little bit of a gray area, but he's been great through the whole process. I know Coach Held and Coach Dewey and myself and Coach Frost were on him pretty hard. So I think we felt good the whole way, but there's, that's all it is, it's feeling good. Eric, how the scrimmage look over the weekend? Like we said, it looked good. Um, I think that first series, the offense came out and punched us in the mouth and, and had some big plays. And then after that, especially the, the first group, they tightened it down and really, really played some good football. Um, so it was good and bad. You know, it's, it's always. Would I like to just go shut the whole thing down in every series? Absolutely, but then I got a whole new bag of problems. Then it's feeling good and trying to reel them back in. I like how it went because we, we, we got knocked down right away and then we came back and did our job, so there's a little bit of butt chewing I can do and let them know we're not quite there yet. So I, I, I like where we're at. Last week you talked about forcing more turnovers. Did that happen? Yeah, it's just so hard in the scrimmage because even though we're scrimmage, we're not, we're not trying to tackle outside the numbers to get people hurt. We're not live on the quarterback, um, so it's hard to punch balls out. There, there was some turnovers, but it's hard to punch balls out. It's hard to make a great play on the ball because we're not, we're going to let the receiver go and get the ball instead of knocking somebody's teeth out on that deal. So it's, it's a little bit hard during scrimmage, but the turnovers have kept coming in practice. Some of the DBs are saying they kind of like being an obnoxious group, like a loud group getting after the offense. Do you, do you like that uh, attitude from them? <laughs> Yeah, I do like the attitude from them. Um, I always like a little, a little confident, a little confident, um, you know, banter. I don't want it to get ridiculous. I don't want penalties. I don't want crazy BS going on. But when you're confident, you're playing good, and you're celebrating. To me, the, the, the greatest thing about football is spontaneous celebration with your teammates. Now, when you make it all about look at me, look at me, I got a problem with that. But when those guys are are talking and celebrating together, I love it. Guys are mentioned uh, Reimer as a walk-on, who was impressed early. What would have you kind of thought of him? Well, I think he's the epitome of what Coach Frost talks about, about not dipping your foot in, diving all the way into deep water, because he's wrong a lot, but dang it, he finds that football. And he, he hasn't 
you know, he embodies the you know, desire to excel, no fear of failure. Whether he's right or wrong in the call, he's going to go make a tackle, and he's, he's done some really nice things. Your freshman DBs, they're, they're, when you're recruiting them, their personalities and everything, about what you thought you were going to get as far as being coachable, or just like how they fit. Yeah, that group, that group is great. I mean, they got the same thing, right? They got a little that confidence swagger, but they're they're not, you know, crazy dudes. They, they want to be coached. They want to get better. They want to learn technique for fish. They want to learn schemes. So they, they've been great to be around. Yeah, Quentin Newsom is a guy who, you know, like Luke Reimer, you asked about. He hasn't been afraid to make on a uh, make a break on a ball, whether whether he gets there or whether he just misses. So I like the eagerness of him. He's got some really good skills, um, talented, like you would say. I mean, he's got some talent, skill. I think he needs to refine a little bit, like Coach Reed said. But um, he's got some definite talent. I can see that he's going to help his football team. Eric, you might have mentioned it already, but. Uh, how much did the offense coming out strong in that scrimmage and kind of punching you guys in the mouth help you guys uh, turn around and bounce back? I think it was necessary uh, for everybody. I was, I was glad for the offense because they did a great job. Uh, Adrian was operating. The whole, the whole line came off probably better than I've seen them all camp. Um, but I think it was good for us to realize that we're, we're not quite at the top of the mountain. we got a ways to climb yet. So it, it was good for all parties. Was it sort of a situation where in the spring they were building a lot of confidence and now maybe in the fall you need to pull them back just a little bit? I don't sense that we have that group that's so over the top that like they think that you know, that we're whatever, we're, we're where we need to be. I, I got that sense and I'm trying to instill in them. We're four and eight until we prove it differently. So you guys you guys better play the chip on your shoulder. We better not come out flat because until we win on on you know October thirty first or September seventh or whatever the games are, we're still a four and eight football team and that's what everyone perceives you as right now. So it's time to prove people wrong. Which is continuity. To, have you seen that translate to the defense? They're knowing techniques better. They know what you guys want from them. They know the scheme. How valuable is that? I think it's huge because you go into the offseason, you get a, a spring practice where they're running the same scheme, same calls, same techniques. Then the, the big piece is over the summer when we can't be around them much, they can have their own seven on seven workouts, the D line can work out. Um, on their own, working calls, working pass rush, but those kids can kind of teach each other now because there's so much more knowledge in the scheme, so I think it's been really good. Those top linebackers, it seems like there's just kind of three guys that obviously established themselves and are coming back. What do we see out of them in terms of challenging each other? Here? Who are you talking about? You're talking about Mo, Will, and, Mo, Will and Colin? Colin. <laughs> yeah, so I think right now, um, we all know, I think in, in, in the Big Ten, you've got a lot of different offenses. You've got some that huddle up and, and allow you to get set, and you've got some that are pretty high tempo. So I think those guys are all going to get a lot of reps, um, and I think they know that, and they've been pushing each other. I haven't seen bickering like, I hope this guy doesn't take my job and undercutting him and all that kind of stuff. I, I've seen guys helping each other, sitting in the film room together, coaching each other after the play. It's, it's been pretty awesome. Mo mentioned something about other leaders echoing the, the main leaders on the team. How have you noticed that? Is that maybe a change from last year? Yeah, I think there's, you know, there's obviously there's vertical leadership and, and horizontal leadership, and sometimes when the when the leaders go vertical down to the rest of the team, or from me to them down, the other guys need to go horizontal so everybody understands the message. And I think that's starting to happen. So once the, the leaders or the coaches say something now, everybody's spreading the word and reeling everybody else back in. So it's been good. All right. Thank you.